Pinnacle Entertainment Group presents a playtest featuring Pathfinder for Savage Worlds. Fast, furious, fun, fantasy. On Kickstarter now. Hi, Savage Pathfinders. We have a very special stretch goal for you today. The Savage Worlds Adventure Edition has a complete chase system that lets you do everything from rooftop chases to battles between galactic armadas. For Pathfinder, we don't need all that. So we actually created a fast, furious, fun card-based system for foot chases and mounted chases, the kind of stuff you're more likely to see in Pathfinder. So once we hit this stretch goal, all backers will receive a print-and-play PDF of the new chase deck. If you buy the core box set, it's going to come with a print version of the chase deck. And if you buy just the book or you're putting together your own package, you can buy it as an add-on. I know regular Savage Worlds fans are going to ask if we'll have the chase deck for uh, Savage Worlds or our other settings. We might. Let's see how this goes. Focus just on Pathfinder for now. And then we'll see about making special decks for the kinds of chases you might see in our other settings. For those who want a, a quick version. And in fact, that's what we're calling this. The quick chase deck. The full rules in Savage Worlds are still there and available for all the complexity you might want for bigger, longer fights. But if you want a quick, fast, dramatic, narrative chase, this might be the thing for you. So let's show you how it works. Hello, Savage Pathfinders. We are going to show you how a uh, chase works with the new chase deck. So I have Jody Black and Simon Lucas here, and I'm Shane Hensley. And this is going to be uh, a little scenario where a band of 10 goblins has stolen a Miri the Barbarian sword in the town of Sandpoint. Hey. <laughs> exactly. This is your big trademark sword, that big crazy thing you carry around. And it actually takes four goblins just to carry it. The other six are going to try to fend you guys off as they weave and bob their way through, uh, through the crowded streets of Sandpoint. Got it? Get them. Yeah, that means I have to adjust my parry back down. Thanks. <laughs> That's right, you do. And uh, let's see. So, Simon, you're going to play Ezra and the Wizard. So, Amiri's called on you for help. She says, hey, these goblins have stolen my sword or something like that. And you come rushing to her side. Rushing? It was probably I'm a little. Old. Yeah, I was going to say it was a little bit more coarse than that. And uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is how a chase works. So, we have the chase deck, which will pop up in the graphics uh, on the side of the screen. We're going to put out uh, a card for each person or group in the chase. So uh, Amiri will get her own card, Ezrin will get his own card, and the group of goblins will get their own card. All right, so Amiri, your card, everybody gets one card per round. The chase goes for five rounds. The goal of the chase is to have for one side or one player in each group to have more chase tokens than the other. So for example, if Amiri has more chase tokens at the end of the five rounds of the chase. She'll have caught the goblins. If Ezrin has the same number of chase tokens, he'll arrive at the same time. If he has less, he'll show up after, if you force the encounter. If the goblins have more chase tokens, they're going to get away with your sword. And then as the game master of your campaign, we do a different adventure where you go off to find your sword. Okay? So uh, we're going to start. Everybody gets one card. There are ways to get more cards, which you'll see as we play. But for this first of the five rounds, here is Amiri's card. She gets the Ace of Spades, and that is staggered. <laughs> Ace of Spades? Yeah. Yeah. And I should mention the uh, goblins, since they are the ones that initiated uh, this, this encounter and run off with your sword, they start with one chase token. Okay. Ezrin's card is a two of diamonds. No time to think. Oh. And we would play if, if we were together, we would play uh, our cards face down and then reveal them all at once. Okay. And the goblins get a nine of hearts local knowledge. Okay. So Amiri is actually first. She has the ace of spades. And Jody, you have two things you can do. You can do anything you can do in regular Savage Worlds, or you can make an athletics roll to try to get chase tokens. Okay, it's athletic since we're doing a foot chase. If we were doing a mounted chase, it would be a riding roll, right? Mm -hmm. So your particular card, the Ace of Spades, the staggered car, has a chase modifier of minus two. So that's what you would be rolling against. A success will get you one chase token and a raise would get you two. 
It also has an ongoing effect. What does it say, Jody? It says ongoing. Anyone who is wounded this round loses a chase token. So I definitely amount for wounding some of these goblins. There you go. So they have one chase token. You have zero. So the range between you and that group of goblins is 10 inches. It's 10 inches for every point of difference in chase tokens. Okay, And that's 10 tabletop inches. So it's mm -hmm. 20 yards in real life. So they've got a, a bit of a head start. So what would you like to do, Jody? You want to do a regular action, try an athletics roll, a multi-action to do both? Uh, I, my card also has an ongoing effect, oh. so you can't do multi-actions this turn. Oh, no. Okay. Well, uh -huh. it's Esrin, man, you are holding me back. <laughs> I'm the lame guy. You are. <laughs> lame in more ways than one right now. Um, <laughs> but I was thinking that I would take my pace so I can get within two inches. And then oh, actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. Amiri has a pace of eight, okay? If you're faster than your fastest opponent, you get an extra chase card to choose from. So in this case, card. yeah, in this case, you got a bad one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to go into your hand, but you got the seven of clubs, which is dangerous okay. ground, okay? That's a complication. Don't choose that one. Yeah, no, don't choose that one. So yeah, we're going to stick no. with staggered, but yeah. you have the seven of clubs in your hand now as a choice in case you get something worse. Yeah, I might say I'll save that one. Okay. okay. So I am going to get close enough so that I can throw the hand axe. Okay. Um, it's still an athletics roll, but, um, but figuratively, um, that's what I'm doing. Okay. So the range is 10 inches, which is uh, going to be medium range for Amiri's hand axe. All right. And let's say that Amiri has two of these on her. All right. I'm still throwing the one, though, because I don't want to do multi-action. I got it. Can't, I think. <laughs> okay, so a range of 10 inches, you're going to need a six. Yeah. Well, I am spinning a Benny. Okay. We still have bennies. We can still use them here. That's right. That happened quickly. I, I got a five, so it wasn't great. Uh, okay. I five. Stick with five. It's still better than a three. Okay. There. So Mary <laughs> throws her axe in the goblins. <laughs> You miss them. I miss. They go flying over their little their little bald heads. Yeah. That's what goblins sound like, by the way. <laughs> I totally buy it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that uh, So that means the goblins are up next. They have local knowledge, which says it adds two chase cards to their hand. So they've actually planned out a little escape route to get away from Amiri. All right. So they duck down a side alley, disappear down a, another little street, and you guys lose them for a moment. And they get two chase cards, which uh, I will reveal on their next turn because I got a good one. And on their actual action, I think since the, the chase modifier on that one is zero, I think they're going to go ahead and try to increase their lead. So goblins have an athletics of D8. They're agile little critters. And here we go. I'm going to roll, and I got a five. So that's one chase token. So they're starting to pull away. They're now two chase tokens uh, ahead of Amiri and Ezrin. Okay, Simon? Uh, okay, so uh, No Time to Think has the ongoing effect. It also gives me two, ch two chase cards. Okay. Your two cards are uh, Five of Hearts, Shortcut, and Five of Diamonds, Create a Diversion. That's nice. You get better. Some get something better for next round, Ezrin. I'll try not to slow you down anymore. But as my action, I'm going to attempt to close that gap. I'll uh, get these old bones moving. I'm going to make another. So that's great, but... Remember, Jody's card is still in effect. So if you wound one of the goblins, they will lose a chase token. I get you, but I've got a chase bonus of plus two on this card, and I, I want to uh, catch up. So I'm okay. going to, I got a three, but I get a plus two for the chase, so that is a success. So okay. I get a chase token. Ezrin has a chase token. Amiri, perhaps uh, confounded by missing with your axe, you never miss. Uh, you stand there in, in shock for a moment as Ezrin kind of scurries past you. They went down this way! I think he's Keep up, Wow, you <laughs> wow, okay. really can move sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you can. So that was one whole round. So now we're on round two. Uh, we're going to draw cards again. Everybody gets one card, remember, and some of us still have cards in our hand. Okay, and your new card, Ezrin, is four of clubs. Who are these guys? Jody, you get nine of spades. Run for it. And the goblins get something. Do I still get the second card for being a uh, factor? You sure player? do. Glad you pointed that out. Ace of clubs. Follow me. All right. Okay. 
Club. You have several choices there. So the goblins, uh, as we mentioned, if we were in person, we would all lay our cards hmm. face down. Uh, there's no hand size limit. You can have as many cards as you can gather. You won't get that many in five rounds, typically. I'm going to play my card face down for the goblins, and I'll wait till you guys are ready. I'm ready. I think you're going to want to know about this, Ezrin. My um, ace of clubs that I'm going to use, so I can go first. Uh, follow me. Any participants on your side who have not already acted may discard their chase card and their hand to act on this card instead. I'm not following you. I know what you're Okay. <laughs> it's also chase minus four. Cause... I'm definitely not following you. <laughs> okay, so let's reveal our cards. The goblins have a joker. Um, oh. When you play a joker, you pick another card to go with it. You'll still go first, just like you would in a regular combat round in Savage Worlds, and you get plus two to everything you do and plus two damage. So they're going to play the joker with a six of spades, higher ground. It gives them a free reroll on one attack this round. And try and defend themselves. Uh huh. So what is Amiri playing? I was going to play the Ace of Clubs. Okay, so mm -hmm. you got the Ace of Clubs. You got Follow Me. Now, so remember, it would already be down, right? So now you reveal it. Okay. And I'm going to be at a minus four. Yeah, when I do my thing. Okay. I'm if, playing, if you do a chase. Yeah. I'm playing Shortcut, the Five of Hearts. Okay. All right. So the Goblins go first. And I think what they're going to do, since they uh, they get free rerolls this turn, and when it's a group, it applies to the whole group. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, they're going to stop for a second, and the six who are accompanying the ones with the sword, they're going to turn around and whip out their little slings and hurl them at Ezrin and Amiri. So uh, I'm going to grab a bunch of D6s here. I've got six guys. Three are going to hurl stones at Ezrin, and three are going to hurl stones at Amiri. The goblins have two chase tokens. You have one, so the distance is 10. So they've got the joker, but they're at long range, so that cancels each other out, right? Minus an extra two in minus four total for the long range plus two for the joker means they need sixes and i just rolled two sixes and a five so i got one hit and one with the raise and they get a re-roll on that missed attack so let's see now nah, that one missed okay so uh they do 2d4 with a sling plus two for the joker so simon your first one does oh no seven points so i believe that's going to shake you that is shaking Here's the one with the rays, and that is going to be five, six. That one wasn't so great. That However, shaking, though. yeah, so uh, the, Benny. the first one shook you, right? Yep, I'll spend Just, a Benny to get rid of it. Okay, and the second one shook you. Would have been a wound if you hadn't, so now yep. you're shaking. Okay, Jody, three at you. They need sixes. Uh, yes, they still need sixes at this range to you. I just rolled two sixes and a one. Uh, no raise. These go okay. are dangerous. They are dangerous. Yeah. In one of the play tests, uh, we actually killed Amiri with goblin slingshots. <laughs> Savage world, man. I know. Uh, okay, you only take five damage from that one, Jody. So uh, that nope. does not get through Amiri's toughness. She's no. a she's a tough gal. Bing. Okay, so that was the goblins. That was a pretty good round of, of shooting for them, but uh, all they did. All they managed to do was, was shake Ezrin this time. Okay, so that was their turn. They took attacks. The other four goblins who are carrying the sword, they just keep running. But there's still one group. And that takes us to Amiri on the Ace of Clubs. Okay, I really want to catch up to these guys. Even though I'm at a negative four penalty, I'm going to try to go for it. Okay. So that's a an athletics roll? It is. Okay, come on, lucky wild die. What's my target number then? So it's a minus four. The regular target number is always a four, right? So you, you need to roll an eight. I got an ace on these D6s. Uh -oh, I've got oh, you're going to roll a one. No, I got a, it's, At least it wasn't a crit fail. I'm known for those, <laughs> and it was not a crit fail. Okay. So, <laughs> so I missed again. I, oh. I, don't, I don't make it all the way up there. So wait, you rolled an ace on your D6. I did not. Oh, I thought you did. Okay. No, no. I was all saying right. that was what I needed. Right, right, right. So Amiri uh, pushes her way through the crowd, but there's just too many people in the way, and you can't quite catch up this turn. All right, Ezrin. So first you need to unshake, remember, because you got hit with sling stones. Oh, well, that's definitely a success. My spirit is D6. Okay. Uh, uh, so I've, I've been down these alleys before, and I, I know a shortcut. So I'm going to duck through a, a couple of houses and try and creep up behind them. 
Uh, the effect on this card is I can discard one of their chase tokens. So I'll do that first, and then I'm going to make a chase roll to see if I can get ahead of them. Boo. So they lose a chase token. They're back down to one. Ezra of the back alleys. Yay. <laughs> well, I'm still working with Athletics D4, so I'm not holding out too much hope. But I got a four, so that's a success. That's a success. So Ezra has a chase token. I'm on two now. Okay, so now we're starting round three. All right, so I'm going to deal out the cards. There's a card for the goblins. The uh, wizard gets a queen of diamonds. What's that? I get two oh, cards. Three. The wizard gets a queen of diamonds. And Amiri, you get an ace of diamonds and an eight of spades. Lost in the crowd, and we're losing them. I've had an ace every single round, and it hasn't done me a damn bit of good. <laughs> Uh, so the cards have been designed so that uh, all the aces aren't necessarily the best effects. They get you to act first in a turn, but there's there's some balance about which ones are worth taking for the chase bonus or the effect or the, the card rank. So you have to make choices every round to, dec to decide whether you want to act first or whether you want a good chase bonus or benefit from the card effect. I'm seeing that. Negative four hurts, man. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. Okay, so uh, everybody choose your card, play it face down in front of you. I have the Goblins card ready to go. Okay, so everyone has played their cards face down. Now we're going to reveal them simultaneously. The Goblins reveal a Ten of Diamonds, Risky Gambit. Uh, I am going to play the Queen of Diamonds I just got, which is Confined Quarters. Okay, Jody. Uh, Ace of Diamonds, Lost in the Crowd. <laughs> okay, so the Ace goes first. What would Amiri like to do? Um, all opponents must make a notice roll at minus two. If none succeed, you gain one chase token and cannot be attacked this round. No. Okay, I'm going to roll for the goblins. So they have a D6 notice. Yep. And at minus two, they fail. Yes, I finally I, have a chase token. You have two GM bennies. <laughs> I think I'll save them. All right, so you can now have a chase token. You're okay. Those. Now I want to uh, try to get up there. I am again at that chase in minus four, which is not great, but I finally have a chase token. So athletics roll. So you're actually even with the goblins now. They have one chase token and you have one chase token. So mm -hmm. you could hit but them But Ezra instead. has two and I, I'm faster than him and this makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> I crept ahead. That's different. I know. <laughs> so I'm rolling again. Again, I need an, a target number of eight, which means I have to ace on these dice, and I usually don't. But luck can happen. Or I could spend a mini. I aced it! Boo. I got an eight. Eight? Yes. Okay, so you actually get two chase tokens. So Miri just, in a burst of rage and speed, cuts through the crowd. Everyone gets out of her way, and she races ahead of the goblins. That was your action, so now you're yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> so now I have caught up to them, actually, right? You're you're ahead of them. Uh, great. Okay. So yeah. now we've cut them off. They're gonna. They're gonna yeah. Right now, just so people know, Jody, you don't have to be ahead of them. They have one chase token. You can always take less to stay with them. So since Amiri just has one ranged weapon and her short sword, a melee weapon left, you can have less chase tokens if you want. I wouldn't because at the end of the, the combat, when you've kind of cornered them, we'll stop and have a regular encounter, right? But it's up to you. Do you want to take less or do you want to keep your three? I want to um, keep my three because okay. I want to try to beat them. And we've only got, I think, one more round. Two rounds. We have two rounds two, left. Yeah two, yeah, two rounds left. Yeah. Okay. Ezrin. Uh, so I have crept into the real narrow labyrinthine alleys around here, and uh, I did, my my card reduces all ranges by half this round, mm -hmm. which didn't affect Amiri, but it might affect me. So I'm going to make a chase roll, uh, and then I am going to try and bolt one of the goblins. Okay. So it's so, a multi-action, so you're going to be at minus two to both. Yep, and the chase modifier on my card is zero, so just at minus two. Oh, I failed my athletics roll. Okay. okay. That was predictable. But my spell casting is better. That's a D10. So I'm going to cast Bolt. And a 5 is a success. Oh, minus 2. It's a fail. I missed. Oh, for the multi action, right? Yeah. So uh, magic missiles come shooting out of Ezrin's hands, fly through the crowd over the goblins' heads. They're just too short, and you miss. Yeah. Okay. 
The goblins. Discard one chase token to force one participant to discard their hand. I don't think we want to do that. We need chase tokens badly. So the goblins are just going to run for us. So they're going to make an athletics roll, which is D8 for them. Their chase modifier is zero. And I rolled a five. So they're going to gain a chase token. So they're... Uh, Amiri is still ahead. Ezrin is holding even with his knowledge of the shortcuts and alleyways of Sandpoint. And the goblins have not managed to get away just yet. But we just have two more rounds. Okay, so Ezrin, you get the six of diamonds. And Amiri, which is a sudden reversal. Yep. Amiri, you get three of spades, evasive running, and the two of spades, coordinated attack. Okay. We're going to look at our cards. We're going to choose and place one face down. Okay, so we're at the top of the fourth round. Uh, the goblins have a four of hearts. Ezrin has a six of diamonds. And Amiri has a two of spades. So, uh, Ezrin, you're first. Uh, so, I, my card allows them, uh, I can choose a participant to become distracted. Uh, so, I want to set them up for Amiri. But if I distract them and then they act, the distracted status will clear up. Before. That's right. He has a chance to act. So I'm going to go on hold and let the goblins go first. Oh, that's thank dirty. You. Yes, thank you. Okay, so the wise Ezrin holds his, holds his whatever it is you're going to do. And uh, the goblins, they're just going to run for it because I've got a plus two chase modifier this time, and they really need to beat you guys because they don't want to fight you guys. So I roll, and they get a success. So the goblins now have three chase tokens. So the goblins have three. Amiri has three. Ezrin has two. Correct. Ezrin's up. Okay, so now I'm going to spring into action, uh, and I choose the goblins to become distracted, and okay. I draw a chase card. At this point, I don't think I need to chase them. Amiri is keeping pace with them, so I am going to attempt to bolt one of the goblins right now. Okay. Range is 10, so no no penalties. It's a, and I, oh, my gosh. That's two aces. No range on a bolt spell anyway. That is, I roll 16. Ooh. Is that all? Well, now I've got <laughs> That's a hit with a raise. Excellent. So one of the goblins sticks his head up out of the crowd and gets hit by a bolt. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna Benny that. That was a total of four on three dice. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Sixteen Critical hit. In GURPS. Four. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I mean eleven. Eleven will take out a goblin. So do you want to describe what happens with your magic missiles here, Ezra? Uh, so uh, searing light shoots from my fingertips, and uh, as the goblin turns to stick his tongue out at me, he gets met with a blast of energy. <laughs> 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 okay, Jody. Okay. The goblins ha are down one of their number. They kind of uh, gasp in awe at what just happened, and they are distracted. I mean, I would be distracted, too, if my friend just kind of got vaporized from the neck up. But it works perfectly for this card. Uh, two of spades, coordinated attack. Um, you and your allies deal plus four damage to distracted and vulnerable enemies this round. And because they're already distracted, that's plus four damage. All I have to do is... Shut up, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> so I am, I'm on the same level of tokens as them, so I can do my sweep attack, right? That's right. You can do melee. Finally! So, okay. so as a GM, I'm going to decide that three of them are within range of your sweep attack. Okay. So one attack roll. They have a parry of, of five. It's not my trademark weapon because they're holding that. That's so I don't right. get my plus one, just a D8. I hit a five on the nosy. Okay, so that hits three of them. Let's go ahead and roll damage for all three. It's so a chase. We're just going to roll all three for now. So just roll your damage. They've got a low toughness anyway. I doubt they can survive Amiri's attack. 11, uh, yeah. 7 and an ace on one of them. <laughs> okay, 9 and an ace on one of them. So Amiri <laughs> dives into the middle of the goblins uh, as they scatter around her in all directions. And yeah, it's a, it's a bad day. So they go flying in all directions. They go running away from the town square ah, and panic. There are now two goblins that can fight and four still carrying the sword. We have one round of play left for them to try to escape. Fifth and final round. Uh, the goblins get their card. Ezrin gets the king of diamonds, impossible stunt. Amiri gets jack of diamonds, double back, and two of clubs, no way out. 
we've all played our cards face down, and now we're going to reveal them. The goblins reveal an eight of diamonds, desperate times. That fits. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, Ezrin? Uh, I'm going to play the king of diamonds, impossible stunt. Okay, Jody? I'm going after the last few here, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to play the jack of diamonds, double back. Okay, so Ezrin is first with the king of diamonds, the impossible stunt. What's happening, Simon? So with the aid of a little magic, Ezrin manages to run up the, the side of one of the buildings nearby to get a good line of sight over the top. So perched on the edge of the roof, hanging from a, a chimney stack. Uh, I'm going to try and bolt one of these one of these uh, goblins here and okay. set up a Miri to take out the remaining few. That is an impossible stunt. <laughs> <laughs> so, spellcast. That is a success. Okay, for your damage. And the damage, just 2d6 this time. Oh, but that's an ace. And another one. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, 1819. Okay, and didn't you have something special on your card? I did. I'm glad you mentioned it. I get to choose a participant, which will be the goblins, and they are now vulnerable. So you actually uh, you hit. You took another goblin out. He goes uh, running through the square with his little tunic on fire. There is <laughs> one goblin left who can fight and four still carrying the sword. And get him, uh, that takes us to Amiri on the Jack of Diamonds. Yeah, okay, so with double back, um, at the start of your turn, choose one opponent who gets a free attack against you. Any one of the goblins can get a free <laughs> attack against me. Well, there's Please. only one who can do it, so he's going to roll. they drop the sword and attack me, but, you know. <laughs> he misses. He's got a, I, a, a dog slicer, which is their little nasty knives, and he, ah, he slices mm -hmm. out at you and, and misses. Yeah, yeah. jump out of the no way. No map for Amiri. Um, and I gain a chase token and draw one more chase card. But it's the end of okay. the round, so I'm not worried about that extra chase card. Okay, but you've got the token. Got the token. If you want it, or do you want to stay even with them? Right now, you're even with them. Now, as long yeah. as you have as many chase tokens as they do, you'll then catch them. Then I can still attack the, the one okay. guy here. But I got. I got to go for the goblins blood. are last, and their chase modifier is a zero. So they might get a more to another token too. Uh -huh. A smart <laughs> tactical idea is to take the chase token. I really want blood. <laughs> but there's only four. They need four to carry the sword, right? Yep, there's only yep. one left to uh, to fight you. So if yep. you took out two goblins, they would have to run away as well. So there's okay. your choice. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to fight. It just and they're vulnerable sense. and distracted. In fact, and uh, even more. Yeah, that's even better. So what are you going to do? Uh, I'm fighting. You know, try another sweep if All they're right. close enough for me to do that. So I'm going to roll a die this time since they're kind of scattered a bit more and see how many you can get. I'm going to roll a d4. Okay. And four. You can actually hit up to four. <laughs> this is not going to go well for the goblins. Well. So that, Simon? It's the time to get the sword back. I know. <laughs> Let's see how the dice roll out. Crit fail. Me. Crit fail. <laughs> shh, 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 don't ask for the crit. Okay, it's not a crit fail, <laughs> but I did roll a two, so I'm spending a mini. <laughs> that is a miss. Yeah. <laughs> Still not a crit fail, but it is a two and a one, so I'm spending my last mini on this. Come on, Amiri. Oh. This is it for all the marbles. Oh, I might change out dice. Hang on. <laughs> Yes, I'm changing out the dice. Uh, Amiri swishes. She slushes. Yes. I aced on the D8. Oh, and she hits. Nine. So That yeah. is a hit with a raise. Yeah. So there's no need to roll damage. They only have a toughness of five. You're Amiri. They <laughs> scatter in all directions. They drop the sword <laughs> as they run away. They'll try again tomorrow. Great. Yeah, no, they won't. No, they won't. <laughs> Look after that sword now. Okay. And Ezrin and Amiri have managed to disperse the goblins that were trying to steal her trademark weapon. The town of Sandpoint watched this whole chase in the middle of the streets. And for a moment, they're kind of horrified by the carnage. And then, yay, they cheer for Amiri and Ezrin. <laughs> Can somebody get me down from this rooftop? <laughs> That's and she's like my sword, and then I reach up there to try to help you down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that is how the chase rules work. Five rounds, pretty simple, I think. Did you have a good time? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Great. I love the narrative flavor that that adds to everything. And, you know, it just, it. You, of course, you work with how your character is, but, I mean, it just felt like that was going to help my character not, like, box her in. Uh -huh. So I enjoyed that. 
Great. Well, good job, Simon. You uh, you designed most of this, so fantastic. I, I think it's we've had a blast every single time we've play tested it. We've had all kinds of different results from the goblins escaping very easily to killing Amiri to getting slaughtered like they did today. <laughs> Not this Amiri. <laughs> <laughs> Not this Amiri. <laughs>
uh, originally 2019 and then eventually 2020. 20, 2020 went sideways, of course, as far as conventions go. And then uh, we decided, you know, Thanksgiving, we'd do our announcement and here we are. So that's the, that's the short version. See, I know that's like the Landauer answer. And then like the Shane answer would have been international conspiracy. Uh, <laughs> that's how it happened. Essentially. So Simon, we just got uh, finished watching the Quick Chase deck and uh, you were instrumental in creating that. How does the Quick Chase deck, um, how is it evocative of Pathfinder and design for Pathfinder versus the kind of larger, more uh, universal chase rules it currently in Sway? Yeah, well, uh, the... the core design goal really was that uh, in Savage Worlds you have uh, the full chase system which kind of encompasses everything from in foot chases and, and horseback chases which is really the focus of Pathfinder all the way through to uh, like biplanes chasing each other for a pulp setting or or even you know uh, spaceship battles and spaceship chases for sci-fi settings and, and that extra stuff wasn't really needed for, for Pathfinder obviously so uh, we were trying to find a way to, to streamline things make it a little faster uh, and a card-based system just seemed like the right way to go, uh, especially with uh, all of Paizo's fantastic artwork that we could use to, to decorate the cards. Nice. And the uh, one, one thing we saw that was really interesting on that was that there's not really any one best card in the deck, right? I mean, even if you get a Joker, you have to pair it with another card. And so that even changes how Jokers interact. And, uh, you know, Aces aren't necessarily better than twos, depending on, on what, you know, there's, there's a lot going on in each card. Do you want to talk us through what's on the cards and what the, the kind of options on? Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it was key that it wasn't always best to pick the, the card. You know, we, we wanted you to have a card hand and to give you some choices, but it was obvious that we didn't just want everybody to just go for the ace or the king as soon as they had one. Uh, mm -hmm. And so to balance that stuff out, we, we, we used uh, both card effects and the chase modifier that's on each card. To kind of make it so that whenever you got a card, you had to weigh up what you were trying to do this turn and, and what the situation was in the chase uh, and decide whether you were going to go for speed using the card rank or uh, to, to boost your chance of, of acquiring chase tokens using the modifier or even some of the kind of the crazy effects that are on the cards as well. So it was, uh, it was important to, to give players choices, especially if you end up with a few cards in your hand. You don't necessarily want to, to go with the highest rank. And sometimes you'll even choose a complication because of some other thing that's happening on that card. I, I, let, me, let me butt in here, Chris, because I think what's really great about what Simon has done is while there are effects on the cards and the, the interplay of the cards themselves is a big deal, it still focuses on the chase. It's not a card game per se, right? And that's really important because we want you to think about your character and whatever the scenario is and the encounter and so forth more than... Uh, you know, I'm going to be the next world-class magic player when I play this game, right? And I think that's where it hits a, a perfect balance. Yeah, it wasn't all strategic. Like, I could look at the cards in my hand and think, well, for my character, you know, especially given the hindrances and the background, this makes the most sense. I'm just going to go for it. And one of the other things, too, was uh, we wanted to be able to use the cards to give that kind of narrative element. So it was easy for, for players to to tell the story of the chase as well as just play the cards and, and kind of like game it out with the mechanics. Uh, so we're still working on some of the card titles and things like that because that gives a lot of the flavor. The uh, one aspect I really liked was that, that the, you know, when, when you're good guys versus bad guys in, in, in combat, like your know, regular mini combat with gang up bonuses and, and et cetera, you know, it's easy to, to swamp the enemies, but here, the fact that you, the, your individual tokens, your chase tokens, determine where you end up coming in at the end of the chase. It makes it really interesting because that's a very uh, solo element, but then the effects on your cards affect your whole team. So there's both of those are going on at the same time where, I mean, there was a round where one of your effects limited what Jody could do because she couldn't do a multi-action. Um, but, you know, at the end, you know, you, could, you had two chances to win. Like if you would have outpaced them or Jody would have outpaced them or met, you know, met the, the, the goblins, you, know, you both could have like won, you know, won the, the chase. Right. So it's, it's you, interesting. Have be, you have to be careful there too, right? Because if, if Ezra and the wizard had got too far ahead and ended the chase, fighting the, the goblins, he'd have had a round all by himself while he was waiting for his support to back, to, to come and back him up. So, so yeah, the, there's there's quite a lot going on in there, but it's we were trying to keep it as simple as possible so that it would stay fast, furious, and fun. Yeah, and it has GM interpretation in there too, right? So you'll notice like when Amiri wades into the goblins, the GM still needs to decide how many can she hit with her sweep attack at once, right? And that's dependent on the uh, the actual creatures that you're fighting or chasing or being chased by. 
and the situation itself. So there's a lot of room for kind of theater of the mind interpretation, even within that little part of the game. And so, Jody, people who are in love with this new idea, which uh, levels of backing the Kickstarter uh, can they get this chase deck at? Well, actually, as long as you're a player digital and above, you're going to get it as a PDF. Um, and then you can use that for print and play at home. So that's pretty much everybody, as long as you've chosen, you know, a reward level that, you know, is giving you the digital content. Um, and then, you know, what we really are excited about is we're making this part of our ultimate box set. So you're not having to pay anything more. If you're already an ultimate box set backer or a rune lord backer, you're getting this as part of the like, inside the box already. It's already going to be in full on glossy print and you just deal out the cards when you get them and I just see them already like people are going to be posting pictures of them all spread out going look at how gorgeous these cards are well I mean, I mean a lot of that is the, the gorgeous Pathfinder art that was already given to us with this license but also a lot of that is Simon's you know layout and genius and the extra titles on those cards and all the flavor that he's putting into it and That's some cool. of the graphic elements by Carl Kiesler, who's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. easy to make them look nice when you have all those elements provided for you. Yeah, and what's great, too, is this box is the box that the retailers are going to buy as well, right? This is what will be in distribution. So everything we're talking about will be in that one box that retailers get to put right on their shelves. Everything's in there. Yeah, and if I can take a minute, to, because we've had a few people ask, like, um, if I back for this later, like as a, or I get an add on for another box set or something, is it going to include the stretch goals? Absolutely. Yes. Because we don't do the like, okay, there's one version of the ultimate box set for backers and another version that's an add on and another version that's for retail. No, that doesn't make any sense. We make one version of the box set. So you're getting it as a rune Lord backer. You're getting both box sets. you ultimate box set backer you're getting the same box set if you're adding on an extra box set for a friend in the pledge manager it's the same box set you're getting it in there well and this box is getting bigger by the day so i mean even since the kickstarter launched what is the companion what kind of good stuff is inside there's lots of great stuff i mean everything from hell knights to the uh the red mantis assassins i mean there's there's just all kinds of crazy stuff and so much more planned and uh, you know we're very lucky there um Mike Barbeau and Chris Warner uh, have just delved into you know, the entire milieu of, of Pathfinder to figure out what is best for specifically Rise of the Rune Lords, which is what we're focused on with this first release, to make sure that you know everything in the companion goes together and makes sense for that game master and um, is complete, right? We really want to make a complete package, and that's, that's where we're heading with Companion. Uh, we were also very fortunate, too, that Paizo uh, allowed us to pick sections for the companion from several different books so that we were able to, to put together some of the most useful information for GMs and players uh, and, and kind of compile something that's, that gives you a lot of background material to, to explain Galarian for, for players who haven't played a lot of Pathfinder before. Yeah, let me just take a quick moment to, to thank Paizo because I, I've worked with quite a few partners, uh, you know, every, very large companies, small companies, everything in between, and they have been the best. Uh, you know, everything we, we try to keep it really low impact because as, as a guy who's worked, uh, you know, who's had their stuff licensed, um, doing lots of approvals and checking every single thing a, a partner does is, is, is tough when you're trying to get your own business done. Right. And Paizo has just done everything we've asked and more to make sure that this is successful. And I think, you know, to us, successful isn't necessarily making money. I mean, we need to make money to stay in business, right? But for me, as the guy who makes the game and, and lives and breathes this company, I want a customer who gets this in their hand to be happy with it, right? And that means having everything they need to play and feeling like, you know, this was the best money they've ever spent in gaming. Well, and, and they've been really responsive too. I mean, I think one of the very first questions on the Kickstarter was, um, you know, it's really hard to get the pawns um, for, for Pathfinder, and I, I don't see them in this box. And just today, some great news came out. So, Jody, do you want to spill what's coming down on the pawns? Yeah, I was just going to say that's, I think, one great example of how uh, Paizo has been listening to what we have to say about what's going on in the Kickstarter. And we're like, hey, we hear that these are out of print and that's a problem for the backers who want to play this game. They want these pawns. Um, so what are your plans there? And they're like, well, let's re-release those pawns. And you know what? 
this time we're going to put our logo on there and yours too. It's playable for both because it's, yeah, it's meant for both. And I can't tell you just how wonderful that makes us feel because we're not just um, being included in everything that they're doing. They're actually trying to help us uh, broaden our field. Like they're, they're behind us 100%. And, uh, and that's just amazing. So yes, you are going to be able to add on to your pledge either now or just wait till the pledge manager comes out. You can get these new um, re-release versions of the Paizo, Paizo Rise of the Rune Lords Pawns for, um, checking my math here real quick, 25. I didn't want to misquote it. Uh, and we'll also be able to do the bases uh, for 15. So you can do that into your pledge now or do it in the pledge manager later. And I think that's just fantastic. It's it been is. so quick. <laughs> and especially since we're doing pawns for our other games now, right? This is going to be very familiar to our fan base. So big shout out to Sonia Morris, John File, and Jeff Alvarez for making this happen for us. Well, and I'm sure Simon's thrilled because, I mean, I've seen the work he had to do to make the, the Deadlands pawns, and the, he doesn't have to do it. Their pies is going to re-release. <laughs> that suits me fine. <laughs> <laughs> so question for you, Simon. The, how has uh, having the access to this huge art library kind of changed how this Kickstarter and this the creation process for this book gone? Uh, well, for, for starters, we're kind of spoiled for choice, right? There's, there's some beautiful artwork in, in the Paizo products. And so uh, we have access to a, a large number of books and some of their pawn sets as well. So uh, we, we're really like slavering at, at what we can add to the to the cards and to the, to the books too, to just make the most beautiful products we have. Yeah, and then one of the, uh, the, the Reddit questions on the AMA this morning was uh, they were kind of poking around at like how big is this bestiary right because the uh, you know, savage world generally kind of uh, has as decent sized bestiaries but this one might even be a record size bestiary is that i mean how many pages do you think you read so far i, I said 66 i think was what don said and they're still yeah, adding to it yeah i think don's actually just talking about how far he's read through it so far yeah. in the editing process it's actually a lot bigger than that but uh yeah, I, I don't know what the final page count is yet yeah so that, that's a very that. large bestiary right you yeah, that is still work in progress. So that's that's not even yeah. Wait, what what's it called, Simon? What's that now? Sorry. What's the name of this book? It's the Savage Pathfinder. Bestiary. Yeah. Bestiary. So you go out and you fight bests. No thing, but you also you also don't spell it the same way as beast. <laughs> oh, 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 we're we're gonna have a pronunciation off now. So okay, Simon, yeah. you're first. Simon, how do you say this word? <laughs> That's drawings. Okay. Um, Shane. Fifth. Okay. I think I know what my word's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> it was drawings and fifth. <laughs> that was brilliant, Chris. I can't believe you had that prepared. But come on, Jody, let's hear it. New R. <laughs> <laughs> these, guys, these guys are no fun. So if, you, if you rewind the video and listen to how Shane <laughs> pronounces this word during the chase thing, you'll understand why this was necessary. But oh my gosh, what did I say? I, I, you have to go watch, Shane. You have to, you have to, <laughs> right. Something along those lines. The, uh, <laughs> so we're almost out of time because we are 23 minutes and we need to get off to, there's a great um, Preston DuBose is going to be on the Wild Eye podcast in about three minutes. So, um, Gosh, one one question for all of you. Why Savage Pathfinder? Why not? Oh. I mean, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> Some of the best uh, adventures in the business. Yeah. They really are. Yeah. And beautiful products, too. Yeah. yeah. I, there's so much excitement. I think we're, we're all very lucky as fans to be able to run Rise of the Rune Lords and these great adventure paths with, you know, Savage World and, and, and just seeing the design process on the kind of the, the choices that the designers are making on, on just how, how big bads are treated. And the uh, we had a great interview with Jason Bullman where he kind of talks about design philosophy, really kind of a deep dive. So that'll be coming out soon. So the uh, guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks for the Kickstarter update. I think by the time we hit publish, we'll be over 275,000. So everybody else stick around. We're going to go raid the uh, Wild Dive podcast with Preston DuBose and um, and then even later the Saving Throw guys are doing their um, uh, favorite show. So stick around all tonight for really great Savage Rolls content and we'll see you guys on the Kickstarter page if we haven't seen you already. Get back in guys. Thanks. Thank you.